Gift Biz Unwrapped, Episode 16. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, I'm Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar store, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. After you listen to the show, if you like what you're hearing, make sure to jump over and subscribe to the show on iTunes. That way you'll automatically get the newest episodes when they go live. And thank you to those who have already left a rating and review. By subscribing, rating, and reviewing, you help to increase the visibility of Gift Biz Unwrapped. It's a great way to pay it forward to help others with their entrepreneurial journey as well. Today, I am joined by R.C. Clark of Dancing Snake Nature Photography. With the lens trained on everything from sunsets to spiders, R.C. captures the striking beauty of the Southwest with a passion for wildlife and natural vistas of the Arizona Sonoran Desert. Viewing her photography, you can take a journey through the surreal and downright creepy, through cactus blooms to venomous fangs, and everything in between. R.C. is a nationally published photographer and will be teaching a photography workshop for the Turtle and Tortoise Survival Alliance in Tucson in early August. I believe it's August 6th. Welcome to the show, R.C. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. I am thrilled that you're with us. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we get started? No, I think you covered it just great. Fabulous. Well, as our listeners know, we like to align the conversation around the life of a motivational candle. The light shines on you while you share your stories and experiences. So shall we light it up? I cannot wait to light up this candle. Yay! (laughs) So what color is your candle? Well, because it's always been my intention to capture and present the awesome beauty of nature, my candle would have to be green. What shade of green? Green of the forest, the green of the deserts. Maybe we can have a couple of different greens swirled around all in there. Oh, there you go. And what is the motivational quote on that candle? My quote comes from one of my favorite authors, Stephen King. Yes, that's Stephen King. And the quote is, Talent is like table salt. The difference between talent and success is hard work. Just like everybody has table salt, everyone also has some form of talent. The difference between having something and developing it into something greater is perseverance and putting in the effort. I love that insight because you're right. Sometimes we'll just hold so tightly to their talent and not even want to share it because they're afraid that someone else may think it's not talent or, you know, are just too fearful of bringing it out to the world. So that quote is fabulous. And you, R.C., being a photographer, same type of thing. I mean, you're sharing something very personal that you're capturing out to the world. Yes, absolutely. So let's go way back to the beginning and let's talk about how did you get into this whole love of photography in the first place? Well, I've had a love for animals, uh, particularly your kind of less loved creatures like reptiles and amphibians and insects and arachnids and things like that since I was a child. But the photography part started with bats and a bridge. Several years ago, I decided to get up off the couch and just take my little eight megapixel point and shoot to this bridge in Tucson where a colony of bats reside. I wanted to see the bats fly out and try to take a picture. Eight megapixel point and shoot cameras don't really do very well for that kind of thing, I found out real quick. But while I was there... I ran into this crazy dress looking guy with this huge ginormous camera and being the outgoing individual that I am, I struck up a conversation and before I knew it, he was offering to teach me what he knew if I would just be willing to learn and practice and do what he told me to do. I thought, well, that's a pretty good deal. So I took him up on it and got the little nicer camera that we had here at home that I had never 
even turned on before because I was so intimidated by it. And I took it out and started taking pictures. And the first pictures that I took, because the rule was I could not use the automatic green box that's on the camera. I had to do my settings myself. And all those first pictures, you couldn't even tell what I was trying to take a picture of. First time I took a picture of something that turned out the way I wanted it to, I was thrilled. And that's when I really, really started practicing hard. And through that, I started finding my artistic voice. And my husband has also been extremely supportive and people were telling me how good my work was. And then when I got contacted by a couple of authors wanting to use my pictures in their books, I decided that I wanted to create a calendar and some greeting cards and start getting my work out there. And that's kind of how it evolved. RC, you're telling me that you just were on a couch one day and decided you wanted to just go and capture some images because you like all those weird, creepy things that make me cringe. (laughs) And that led you out to then meeting this gentleman. And then everything kind of just evolved from there. I would say that it's not only just evolved, but it's almost skyrocketed from there. Yes. That's crazy. What if you would not have gone out that one day? I ask myself that question all the time because I was really on the fence about whether I wanted to just stay home and watch TV or get in my car and drive to this bridge and watch the bats fly. And I ask myself all the time, if I had stayed home, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And it just that one action changed everything. Just that one action to get up off the couch and get in my car and drive to a bridge. That's so interesting. And I think for our listeners, especially those who are trying to search for that thing that they want to do, just it tells you to take action. What RC did was, you know, it's just a passion, just a regular kind of day to day type thing. But instead of staying on the couch, she got up, followed an interest that she had and look what happened. And we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but when you get a chance to look at some of her photography, it is breathtaking. So you clearly, you have such a passion for it and such an artistic flair. I mean, it's got to be that photographer's eye because I could not take pictures like that, even if I dared getting close to some of the creatures that you've gotten close to. Oh, thank you so much. It's my passion. I love it. It gets me close to those creepy kind of creatures that make other people cringe. And it's just opened up so many doors for me and introduced me to so many amazing, interesting people. I have a whole new group of friends that revolve all around this photography. Wow, that's amazing. Tell us a little bit about Dancing Snake Nature Photography. Is it a business that you do out of your home? Dancing Snake Nature Photography is a side business. I don't particularly do it out of my home. I do all my editing and whatnot. I have sold some things online, but I love working the shows, going to an art fair and setting up. It's such a visual medium that online to me doesn't even quite captured it. But when you have people passing by your booth and seeing your display and your work right there in front of them, and you can tell them the stories behind the picture, that's where I really enjoy the business side of it is meeting the people and getting out there to the art fairs. So I wouldn't say that it's so much done out of the home. I do frame and everything here at the house, but I get out there to the shows. So your photography studio is the desert. Your production studio is the home. And then your selling arena really is the shows. Yes. And some online because you do have the website as well. Yes. How did that all come together? How did you decide that this was going to be the way it would all work? Well, it's still a work in progress and I'm still tweaking and evolving and trying to figure things out. But I wanted to do the shows because I like to go to shows and I have almost always bought things at shows that I've gone to just because it's there and it's accessible and it's just different than putting in your PayPal number. So along the way, I mean, you've talked about how this whole thing has just blossomed into something probably bigger than you even imagined. 
But can you bring us to a time when you were really challenged with this and kind of thinking like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten into? And am I going to continue? This might be just a little bit too much. You know, some type of time when you were really not so sure about the whole route. One of the biggest struggles and challenges that I have is understanding all the paperwork for filing the taxes for working in different counties and different cities within those different counties and their tax laws and who I have to pay taxes to, you know, and making sure everything is perfect and correct. That is my biggest challenge because I find all that paperwork and everything so confusing. Thank goodness I have a good accountant who's kind of able to help me sort through that. Every time I get some weird piece of paper from the tax office that I don't know what it means or whatever, it does kind of make me feel like sometimes, what am I doing? Maybe I should just go back to taking these pictures for fun. That's definitely been a challenge. And then also just overcoming the skeptics. Sometimes I've had people come to me with the best intentions to kind of caution me in pursuing this interest because Nobody can make money at this or there's so many other great photographers or, you know, you're just spinning your wheels and I just smile and let them know I appreciate their concern. And then I just let it roll off my back like water off a duck's back. And you'd certainly need to be able to do that. It sounds like from the little bit that I've gotten to know you already, your husband is a huge supporter and gift bizzers, if you don't have that type of support, it's really a struggle. RC is really lucky because she does have that support from her husband. But if you don't, there are different types of networking groups you can go to, chambers you can be with, possibly friends and or family that support you. But you absolutely need someone who is backing you, believes in you, all the way so that you can become successful. It's really important. Well, I couldn't do this without his support. I absolutely could not do this if he didn't support me. Have you ever had any challenges at the shows? Um, at your booth? or Yeah. I mean, if there's a lot of people asking questions and needing my attention all at the same time, um, that can get a little challenging because I want to give everybody individual attention But sometimes it's difficult if I have people coming at me from all sides and I can get a little confused easily sometimes. Do you have any tips for those who are doing fairs or shows on how to handle that type of situation? You have to give everything you can to the person who's right in front of you and try to tell the other people that, you know, you'll be with them in a minute, that you want to answer their questions. And you'll do that as soon as you finish up with the individual that you have in front of you. But I'm still like, that's still a work in progress as well. But I think what you brought up is a good point, because even though you're giving the person that you're talking to directly your full attention, you're not totally ignoring that other person. You're saying, look, I recognize that you're here. I'm looking forward to talking to you. I'll be with you as soon as I can. So you're still being very respectful to other people that you've noticed really do want to talk with you. Oh, absolutely. I've worked in the retail industry almost my whole life prior to this, so... I've been in sales and I'm also a picky customer, so I know what I expect when I'm on the other side of the counter as well. To be quite honest, I don't feel too sorry for people who have to wait because they get to look at all the beautiful photography. Oh, thank you. (laughs) RC, can you share with us some type of a promotion or one of those specific events or something that you're doing at those events that really changed for you and helped move the needle in terms of people purchasing your photography? You know, I was approached by a member of the Phoenix Herpetological Society if I would donate a piece of original work for their silent auction for their big fundraiser. And I did. And frankly, I was a little nervous that no one would bid on it or it might get, you know, maybe a $5 pity bid or something like that. So I was really nervous about that. Well, not only did people bid on it, but they almost needed an extra sheet of paper for all the bids that were on this piece of work. And I was so humbled and surprised when later I was told by the event staff that this was the first time that a piece of donated work had surpassed their seed price of any auction item. It was an amazing feeling to know that my contribution raised awareness and funds for scientific research and reptile rescue efforts. That's so very passionate to 
to me and seeing that interest in my work and that not only did it sell, but it went for way above the asking price that gave me the confidence that I need to just keep going on. Wow. What was the photograph of? The photograph is of a yellow mud turtle with its reflection, and the turtle looks like it has a smile on its face. It's one of my most popular photos. You know, RC, that's really good feedback because I think a lot of people get approached all the time for, you know, donating to this event and this event. And some people, I think, feel like, you know, it's just freebies and it's not going to give them additional visibility or help them with additional sales at all. Did you see that then this spread the word about your business and your photographs? Oh, absolutely. You know, there is no bad publicity and... It did help to spread the word about my work and get people more familiar with me. They had done, the uh, Phoenix Herb Society had done a beautiful bio of me that accompanied my work. Anything you can do to get out there, and and it's not just that. There is a huge component in giving back to your community and giving back to your causes that I fully believe comes back to you. Agreed. Switching over then, on the customer service end, is there anything special that you do to make people who then receive one of your fabulous photographs, make them feel special and valued as a customer now of yours? I really like to engage people personally, and I enjoy the one-on-one connections that I've made with them. For example, at one of my shows, somebody bought a dozen photographs and asked me to personalize each of them. And I was very happy to do that. I like talking to people. I like giving them photography tips. I get asked for tips and tricks all the time when I'm doing these shows. And that is something that I'm able to give back. You know, if I can help them take a better picture by just giving them one good piece of advice that they've asked for, that's a way that I can make them feel valued and special because I'm willing to share my heart with them. I love that because that's something that you're doing directly from you. Yes. It's not like something else that you apply to the photograph or that you do later. It's something directly from you, RC, the photographer of the piece that they're purchasing. It's an additional conversation point if someone's with a friend or something and they're looking at the photos. Yes, absolutely. Let's flip over now into our reflection section. This is a look at you and what's helped you to succeed along the way. What would be one natural trait that you have that you think has helped you to succeed? Well, my father taught me from a young age the importance of being outgoing and being comfortable with approaching people. And I feel like I am very good at talking to people and I make myself very approachable so people aren't afraid to come to me. And I have a kind of a natural ability to network and approach people without a fear of rejection. I get told no quite often, but I don't ever take it personally. And I don't let the fear of being told no stop me from embracing, you know, whatever might be the next opportunity. So have you always been that way? Or is this a characteristic that you've kind of gotten into over time? I didn't start out that way when I was very young, but it's something that I've developed over time. I've seen it work so well for other people, and I've seen how it could hold people who are not comfortable networking and not comfortable approaching people. I've seen how it can actually hold them back. Good advice, a good characteristic. And I think your point here about you maybe didn't have it when you were younger, but you've learned the benefits of just being able to jump back is an important thing for all of us to remember because, you know, when you're so passionate, especially with your industry being photography, I mean, these are your pictures. This is coming from the lens through your eye and the light setup and all of that. You could take it personally because it's such a personal product that you're creating. And to be able to overcome that really says a lot to you and your future, to be quite honest. Well, you know, photography is just another art form. What may be beautiful in the eye of one beholder may not be beautiful or interesting in the eye of another. And not everybody's going to like or appreciate the same art. And so I never take it personally if somebody doesn't like my work because there's somebody else that'll think it's amazing. 
There you go. There's somebody else who will think it's amazing. What tool do you use regularly to keep productive or to create balance in your life? I love social media. I use Facebook and Pinterest, Flickr very regularly to connect with people and look at other people's photography and get inspiration from their work as well. So I'm on the computer either editing or going through my social media accounts and looking at what people are saying and and what they're doing. Have you found that you've gotten business through your social media? I have definitely gotten business through my social media. I put out a calendar last year for this year. And a lot of my sales came from Facebook and people sharing and talking about the calendar. And when I would show, oh, look at this picture that I'm going to put in it, someone inevitably be like, oh, I want one of those. How do I get that? And then I would direct them to my website where my PayPal button was. Okay, so let's back this up and talk about this a little bit. Well, I put together a wall calendar And then I would post pictures that were in the calendar on Facebook to give people an idea of the work that would be shown in there. And that generated interest and that generated sales. So you put together a calendar that people could purchase? Correct. Got it. Okay. Then you'd put up a picture, let's say it was for that month, and post that. And then people would see it and be interested not only in that, but in all of your photography. Correct. What book have you read lately that you think our listeners could find value in? The books that I find helpful and valuable are ones that help to give me increased knowledge of my subject. One of those books is a book from authors Harvey Poe, Christine Janis, and John Heisler, and it's called Vertebrate Life because it's very important for me to understand the animals that I'm going to be photographing to know what time of day they'll be most active or what kind of behaviors can I expect when I come across that certain animal. I would encourage anybody who is pursuing anything as a hobby or a business to immerse yourself in as much information as you can for your subject. Really good advice. I mean, some of these creepy crawly things, how close do you get to them? Well, generally, I'm within, depending on what it is, it could be a few inches for a scorpion or or a spider to generally the venomous snakes, the rattlesnakes, I will stay about two and a half, three feet, depending on the species. Some species I will give a little bit of a longer reach to. Gift Bizzers, just as you're listening to the podcast today, you can also listen to audiobooks with ease. I've teamed up with Audible for you to be able to get an audiobook similar to the one that RC is talking about today for free. All you need to do is go to giftbizbook.com and make a selection. That's giftbizbook.com. I'm going to slip in one other question here, RC, because I'm just fascinated by all of this. Do you have one single favorite photo that just is by, for you, just the best of all that you've ever done? One of my absolute favorite photos is a photo that I took of two caterpillars. What I did is I found all these tomato hornworm caterpillars, which are green and white and purple. And I plucked them off of my honeysuckle bush and I went and I bought some beautiful sunflowers and I put the caterpillars in a tank with the sunflowers. And then for the next five or six hours, I just photographed them just doing whatever they wanted to do in there. And there's one photo that I call celebration where it has two caterpillars that have reared up facing each other with these flowers in the background. People have thought that I stuck a mirror in front of the caterpillar, but when you really look at the photo, you could tell that that's not it. It's just an authentic behavior, and it's just very, very unique and probably a photo I would never, ever be able to recreate. Well, they ended up being good models for you. They were fantastic models. And I believe you have that photo on your website. Yes, I do. We are going to be coming to the end of our time together in a minute. But before we do, I want to get to our dare to dream question. RC, this is for you. I would like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. This is your dream or goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. 
what is inside. Thank you so much for this amazing gift. And I want to invite everybody to come join me as we accompany the photographic team from National Geographic on a no holds barred expedition in search of unique and wonderful reptile and amphibian images from around the globe. And of course, all of this is for my top rated television show that is featured on the Nat Geo Wild channel and footage for the Disney Presents scientific series showing in theaters around the world. Oh, my word. So you totally have your vision for your life all laid out. I love the detail with that. Oh, thank you. And I can't wait to see it. Yes, me too. Part of what I like to do with this Dare to Dream question is for everybody to be able to put it out in the environment. And I really believe in the law of attraction that it can come back to you. So I would not be in any way surprised that you'd realize everything you've just said. Well, that would be amazing. Thank you. (laughs) So now I'm sure all of our listeners are interested in how they can see some of the photography and get to know you a little bit better. How could people get in touch with you? So people can see my photography on DancingSnakeNaturePhotography.com, also Dancing Snake Nature Photography on Facebook, Pinterest, and Flickr. You can get in touch with me at DancingSnakeNaturePhoto at Comcast.net. Perfect. And Gift Bizzers, as you know, you can also jump over to giftbizunwrapped.com and there you'll find RC's show notes page. And that will have all the information, all the links to everything that she's just run through for you. Thank you so much, RC, for these valuable gifts that you've shared with us, your journey, how your photography business has evolved and how it will continue to evolve because we're all going to be watching for you in the future. Thank you so much for having me on your program. May your candle always burn bright. Thank you. Yours too. Learn how to work smarter while developing and growing your business. Download our guide called 25 Free Tools to Enhance Your Business and Life. It's our gift to you and available at giftbizunwrap.com slash tools. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Would you like to be on the show? Or do you know someone who can provide valuable insight from their experiences? If so, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is submit a form for consideration. You can access the form at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash guest. That's giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash G-U-E-S-T. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. 